the matchup for sure that uh, wait a second the pumpers are also playing a new matchup here so wildcard gaming was expecting a warrior so this composition that they brought out is supposed to counter that warrior of nerdridge now nerdridge gonna be throwing themselves a curveball here playing that windwalker this is very interesting i actually think the pumpers wins this blind pick yeah, definitely nerdridge could be potentially going down here very early on as he was caught into a leg sweep a lot of bursts thrown out by wildcard gaming and what's interesting about the composition the pumpers is running right now is this is what wildcard gaming was running last week had so much success and actually completely dominated method black with so this is one of the things about wildcard gaming they have the flexibility of playing these cleave setups but also bring in the mage of morrow when they really need to we'll just have to see if that's enough for taking down the pumpers here yep since the focused growth changes to restoration druid Mistweaver has been on the rise effectively when we see a Mistweaver going against a restoration druid the Mistweaver Monk is unlikely needed to drink to maintain his mana at a heavy advantage over the Druid, which is why we see them more prominently. We saw Gareki in the North American region playing this composition, Windwalker, and Unholy Death Knight with the Druids, but now we see Mistweaver played in it a lot more often because of that mana advantage. Yeah, Morrow in midfield trying to create some pressure for his team. Servant is getting caught into the Polymorphs, but looks like they're not going to be able to get too much done as Nerd Rage and Terrain are both playing very defensive. Uh, with this positioning, they realize, look, Nerd Rage, no Transcendence, no Touch of Karma, no Diffuse Magic, basically nothing as Drainer moves to the midfield, gets a double leg sweep. Nice setup here by the Pumpers. Morrow could potentially be forced into his first Ice Block, but I think we kind of talk about, for these Cleave setups, like what the Pumpers are running, to take down a Frost Mage, you have to work through a few defensive cooldowns that have a very short cooldown. The Temporal Shield for the Mage, as well as the Iron Bark for the Restoration Druid. You need enough uptime to get through both of those, and that is your window of opportunity to really push forward and try to get a, the big cooldown, which is Ice Block. So. Unfortunately for the Pumpers, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to have enough time as they still are in midfield. That was actually a really nice setup once again. Cervantes always setting up uh, the Windwalker Monk as well as the Mistweaver Monk by using that Death Grip, taking Looney out of position, and they can get the double stun. So that's a classic combo you see between Monk and Death Knight, and one of the reasons why together they're so strong. We've seen Nerd Rage compete with Cervantes in the past, but more frequently on an Arms Warrior. This is the first time we've seen him debut the Windwalker Monk, but you can tell that even though maybe he's inexperienced on that specialization the synergy between them is definitely carrying their team a lot of these triple stun lockdown crowd control attempts are going to net them huge pressure potentially kills later on in the fight you see a double stun initiated looney responds and basically the trade we will see from the side of wildcard gaming for these leg sweeps is a temporal shield or an iron bark so in that position temporal shield wasn't available but iron bark was so it's pretty straightforward for looney to make that exchange now the next time this incoming stun lock happens it's morrow that will have to make the trade He'll have to predict the incoming stun because he doesn't have his Glyre's Medallion to remove it to then gain access to Temporal Shield. Pressure will be on Morrow to avoid this next stun lock. Yeah, definitely. Blizzo moves in on top of Drainer and Nerd Rage. You can see all three monks positioned behind the pillar. Blizzo doesn't want to deal with that Fist of Fury, so he rolls away, turns his attention over onto Cervantes. But so far, like we talked about, Cervantes on that Death Knight, he's going to be feeling relatively healthy. Once again, Blizzo is opting to run that grapple weapon, and that is an effective counter against an Unholy Death Knight. As if you grapple weapon, you do disarm the Death Knight, and then unfortunately he doesn't have access to that Death Strike. So if they can burst Cervantes down, grapple weapon, uh, you won't be able to get out any sort of self-healing, and that's a window of opportunity for Wildcard Gaming to actually try to take him down. We were saying just as the game started, we thought that the Pumpers were compositionally advantaged. I would have to agree with it on paper, but the pressure I think has been somewhat in favor of wildcard gaming. We've seen frequent touch of karma forces from Nerd Rage as an exposed target before dampening, which is great for the wildcard gaming. Their main strategy is to kill the Windwalker Monk before dampening. And then much the same has changed my mind is to then switch to the Death Knight in deep dampening. So if wildcard gaming can maintain mana, which they're also doing a great job deeper into dampening, paired up with that grapple weapon strategy, which we saw first initialized just a couple weeks ago to try and remove that death strike healing from the Death Knight. So if you use grapple weapon or a disarm or a dismantle use one of these spells against a death knight you take away their weapon they can't use death strike which is effectively as they heal themselves when they use it they can't use it for an extended period of time and then you try and burst them down and kill them in that window of opportunity still dampening likely to be required to pull it off but it's something that blizzard has got in his back pocket and so long as looney can maintain his mana until that stage i do think they will be able to kill cervantes with that condition I think it is likely, especially later on in the game. Trainer moving in, getting in the double leg sweep. Blizzo trinkets out, Morrow opting to sit it. 
as Iron Bark protects him from a lot of that incoming damage. But now Blizzo could actually be a vulnerable target if the Pumpers can find a nice leg sweep onto Blizzo, get the burst setup they need. But Wildcard Gaming looking to get some pressure rolling. Interrupt onto Drainer. Trevante's getting low. Nerd Rage forced to use the Touch of Karma. This is beautiful pressure from Wildcard Gaming. Touch of Death gets used, but Nerd Rage is able to deflect it with the Touch of Karma, as well as the Fortifying Brew, as the Pumpers are looking to reverse the pressure on tomorrow. This is what I was saying. The pressure from Wildcard Gaming, they've been getting big cooldown forces from Nerd Rage throughout and have decent damage on Cervantes. So even though they may be compositionally disadvantaged, they're setting themselves up well for victory. They're maintaining mana and taking opportunities of these windows, keeping Drainer on the back foot. And one thing is that Drainer has gone the safe route with his Mistweaver. He's not running the way of the crane which we have seen a lot of mistweavers so they can increase their damage and move forward and attack and add pressure to the team for a kill it would be very effective during dampening maledix pushes on morrow for ice blocks so trainer has opted to go for a safer pick which is all in well but he's not winning on mana so going the safe route and then not winning on mana is definitely not playing in the condition but with Whoa. the double stun that nets them an ice block against Maro just as we've stepped foot into dampening. Counterspell secured with a double stun. This is a good opportunity for Wildcard Gaming to swing back, but Blizzo overextended his defensive lineup earlier on using Touch of Karma on Nerd Rage's Touch of Karma to try and redirect the damage back at him for a kill and not fine yet. Scary moment for Blizzo, but Looney doesn't even flinch. He just easily recovers. Yeah, and one of the reasons why Windwalker monks right now are so powerful into these cleave setups is one of the new honor talents called Turbo Fist. And basically what it does is it empowers your Fists of Fury to give you 100% parry. So while you're channeling Fists of Fury, like Blizzo is now, you have 100% parry. As In addition, you're going to be snaring up everyone hit by that Fists of Fury by 90%. So super effective into Cervantes and Nerd Rage. And really, the only opportunity the Pumpers have to take them down is if they catch them in, catch them in a stun. And if they're able to do that, they might be able to fall. But as long as Blizzo responds appropriately, doesn't waste his trinket, doesn't waste his touch of karma, I really feel like it's unlikely he'll go down in this matchup. Both these teams looking evenly matched in game number one. And the entire series could come down to victory here on the Grand Arena to gain a compositional advantage for the swing match in the rest of the series. Everything is on the line here in game number one. We're now at 15% dampening, moving towards that 40% magic mark to take down an unholy death knight. There have already been close calls for Nerd Rage and Cervantes, which is something that I wasn't expecting. Wildcard Gaming have definitely prepared this composition here for the blind pick, and they're looking very solid so far, still maintaining a mana advantage against the Mistweaver, which is also an unlikely advantage. Good crowd control initiation by Blizzo, locking Drainer and Cervantes out of the fight. The grapple weapon making it a scary moment, but now that that has faded, Cervantes wants to attack. He may be overextending, has to anti-magic zone. Looney secures a cyclone. And this is what I love about Looney is that he can play that defensive trading game all the way deep into dampening, make zero mistakes, and then still clutch out exactly when he needs to, these cyclones to get a kill. Never overextends it. He's definitely not known as like an aggressive druid, but he definitely has the skill set to do it, and he picks his moments well. Yeah, definitely. Morrow now at Temporal Shield looking to get away. Tiger's Lust backs him up, and Blizzo has been doing a great job with his Ring of Peace and Tiger's Lust to give Morrow a little bit more breathing room in this matchup and making it difficult for Nerd Rage and Cervantes to really have the uptime that they need. So Wildcard Gaming, you can tell that they have practiced this composition quite a bit. They have really good synergy, really good chemistry. Now Nerd Rage and Cervantes getting bursted down, but Morrow with only one ice block. So uh. a little bit vulnerable here. Cervantes, grapple weapon, no death strikes available. An anti-magic shell has to be traded out. Death packs as well, but still Cervantes very very vulnerable. Drainer doesn't have the life cocoon for another couple seconds. Cervantes has to hold on, but Looney denies, actually gets the Cyclone. Cervantes has to trink it out, even increasing the vulnerability there of Cervantes. And I feel like that was potentially a little bit over aggressive by Cervantes, but they really want the second ice block. Well, we see an overlap of Iron Bark and Temporal Shield. This is the kind of cooldown rotation that I was talking about earlier in the game. Having used both that defense at the same time means that the next unlock could be Morrow's ice block, and that's engaged. He tries to use Glyre's Medallion to hold out, but Glyre's Maldix are now flying in, soaking up some incoming healing. Looney gets interrupted. Things could snowball out of control. Blizzo denies it for now, but how much longer? If Nerd Rage is able to connect, he's unable to. Good Blizzard position, but Ring of Peace punts Morrow back. In 
into the fight. Touch of Death is about to go off. This could easily force the final ice block of the game. Cervantes has secured multiple interrupts, putting Looney behind. Huge hit. Mario gets gripped back in. Blizzo saving him for now, but how much longer will it be? It's not going to be enough. Second Nerd ice rage. block forced. Nerd Rage at the same time gets counter-aggressed by Blizzo. Blizzo definitely MVP in that moment, and that's what these matches end up being, is just a race to get a kill, maybe even a cross kill deeper into dampening. Answer to the entire team of the Pumpers with this, and we'll find out shortly. It's funny that you do bring up the, 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 that team as well. I know that they're going to be playing a little bit later today against Method Orange. We, we have NA getting all set up. So there are some pretty interesting things going on in North America. It's obviously getting down to the wire there as well. But let's see if the Pumpers, this is one of the, this is what, the second time that we see them on broadcast. Last time they were able to win it when they were on broadcast. Will they be able to get something going in the top side of the bracket? Yeah, but the meta has been changing even without many changes to the game, especially like a composition like this. We thought Windwalker Mage wasn't too potent and it wasn't that strong, but in that last match, obviously Nerd Rage looked a little shaky, but overall their pressure was solid. Blizzo's support was good. He's looking much better on the Windwalker overall. We've definitely commended Blizzo in the past for his Arms Warrior play, most certainly his defensive as well as ability to switch to offensive, arguably one of the best warriors in, in the game, if not the best warrior. Now substituting onto Windwalker and still supporting the team just as effectively. Yep, definitely. I uh, was looking to see if Blizzo was going to be switching over to the Tiger Eye Brew, as that would be good pressure on the Fnobbers on the Balance Druid, kind of cut, cuts through the bear form, but he's still opting to go with the Grapple Weapon, so that kind of says to me that Cervantes is likely going to be the kill target once again. They're sitting on Fnobbers, trying to deny him, as it's unlikely Cervantes will go down until a little bit later on in the game, but with the Grapple Weapon, that sort of opens up the opportunities for wildcard gaming in this matchup. We'll have to see how that exactly plays out. So far, Morrow and Looney have been doing a great job getting a lot of control of Cervantes. And this is one of the problems. When you pressure down a Moonkin like this, unfortunately, he's not going to be able to get out too many Cyclones in this situation. You have the interrupt from Morrow, interrupt from Blizzo, and if you're in balance form or the Moonkin form for too long, then you're very susceptible to some of the damage. And if you just sit on the Moonkin, he's kind of forced in this spot where he's in bear form. He has to try to tank through a lot of the damage, and there's really not too much counter pressure on the side of uh, the Pumpers on the wildcard gaming. I mean, the main strength of the Pumpers composition is Drink Denial with an Unholy Death Knight and the Diseases, the Tidal Surge Azurite trait, then a Balanced Druid bringing in Starfall for massive area of effect. Drink Denial, that's supposed to be the main win condition, and you can tell that the Pumpers are really going for it because Drainer is still not running Way of the Crane for that aggressive of push on the Mistweaver. He wants a mana advantage. Well, Looney's been maintaining his mana throughout this series where he is not supposed to be able to maintain it. So unless the Pumpers can start developing that mana lead, it's not looking good on this composition that they've substituted in either. Blizzo connecting out of Fnobbers, multiple defensive cooldowns forced there. Although a Maledict Misfire may be, may be there on a Fnobber. It's not going to be accomplishing too much from Morrow. Definitely going to be allowing the Pumpers more opportunity to breathe. Touch of Death available, but Blizzo gets Cycloned right as he wanted to go for a Grapple Weapon push. We see a swap to Looney. This is definitely a win condition as well for the Pumpers to try and kill the Restoration Druid in a swap. They can use the Death Grip, pull Looney into the open, stunlock him with the Asphyxiate, although it's less likely to see him go down without Incarnation available. That is rotating back and available in another 40 seconds. So if we see another switch to Looney, they could try and pull a Gladiator's Medallion from him. So far, that seems to be the only win condition for the Pumpers before dampening. Yeah, Fnobbers has been pressured down. Blizzard has been doing a good job so far. Incarnation gets used by Fnobbers, but he gets denied with a lockout. But it was just the mini Incarnation. Wants to sort of panic wildcard gaming in that situation. Fnobbers has his real Incarn coming up at around 15 seconds. That's really when they're going to need to make an offensive push. And I think it's likely they go after Looney once again. If Drainer and Fnobbers can push in, they can get on top of Looney, get him, catch him in a stun. It could potentially be the Trinket from Looney and Barkskin. And could maybe continue the pressure, but I think they've already committed their Maladex in that last attempt, and unfortunately, they're not going to be able to uh, have that available. Mana still even, and that's not good for the Pumpers. Now having lost a blind pick and now potentially losing their counter pick, this new composition that Wildcard Gaming have crafted appears to be the perfect answer for their team. We may see Nerd Rage have to step back into the battle, but even then, the Windwalker Frostmage is supposed to be a good composition into Arms Warriors. It just seems to me that what, what I would have liked to seen from the Pumpers was a Windwalker Death Knight, but with Fnobber's healing. 
Fnauber started the tournament series on the Chalky Milkman as the healer for that team, then switched over to the Pumpers and has been playing a lot of Balanced Druid. But I think his Resto Druid would be highly valuable in this particular series at this particular mark of it to try and counter comp this Windwalker Frost Mage composition. And I'm surprised that they haven't utilized him on that Restoration Druid yet. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something we were expecting from the Pumpers with Nobras getting on that roster would give them a lot more flexibility, but it seems like they're confident in Drainer healing them on the Mistweaver Monk, but normally when we see the Pumpers run the setup, they really focus on outmanning the other team. They really try to focus on drink denials of Nobras pushing in, landing Starfalls on the Looney, and on these smaller maps makes it basically impossible for them to sit down and drink, but Pumpers, they've been playing so passive that looney has been able to sneak away, get into cat form, and go for those drinks to regenerate his mana and still in a really good spot as we just entered dampening, but it, now it seems like the Pumpers, they want to get aggressive. This is what I was saying, if Fnobbers and Drainer can push in, Looney is a vulnerable target. I think he's the most vulnerable target in this matchup, especially if Cervantes can get uptime, but Blizzard with a beautiful double leg sweep denies all of that momentum. They still don't have a mana advantage. I don't think Drainer going the safe route is the best route in this case, unless they can actually run Looney out of mana, but they're not even denting his mana bar with dampening having just kicked in. I, I think if Drainer was running Wave of the Crane, that could be an added bonus of damage to kill Looney later in the game or to even kill Maro and overwhelm him. I mean, with a Death Knight on the Mage, it's really difficult to polymorph the Wave of the Crane as long as they save their interrupts and stuns for Drainer to push forward and get aggressive. They catch Blizzo overextended, Instead of trying to go after him, just decide to crowd control him out of the fight and go after Morrow. Morrow sees it coming, activates Temporal Shield right before the stun, denying effectively all of that damage, healing himself back to full for free. Wildcard Gaming are just looking like a solid team. They're coming into this tournament 7-0 against Method Black in the previous rounds, and in this tournament here today, bringing in a new composition, showing that they can even diversify themselves further without the meta changing too significantly. Now looking like they've got a solid answer for every option that the Pumpers have available, and potentially going undefeated in another tournament, Ben. Yeah, I mean, that would be very impressive to see from Wildcard Gaming, but like we kind of talked about, they've shown their hand towards a Method Black, and now Method Black has a potential answer for what they couldn't beat last week. So that's looking good for them, but Wildcard Gaming with Method Black, these seems to be the most prepared teams. They always have answers. If there's a composition that beats them the prior week, they're always prepared with something different, different strategy, different talents, different compositions. And that's really what makes them one of the most dominant teams in the entire world and why we see them consistently do so well in these tournaments. A nice setup here from Morrow and Blizzo onto Fnobbers and Cervantes, double leg sweep with a polymorph on Drainer, but Drainer was able to get that life cocoon out preemptively, keep Fnobbers alive, but Wildcard Gaming, they turn their attention over onto Cervantes. They're at 14% dampening, and although Cervantes is feeling relatively safe right now, if Looney can keep up this mana, Blizzard and Morrow, I feel like, can definitely take down Cervantes. It could just be right here, right now. Once again, grapple weapon, huge plays from Blizzo. Offensive Cyclone by Looney, looking to deny Drainer any heals in this situation. Can he follow up the chain? Cervantes denies with a nice mind freeze, but Blizzo trinkets out. The pressure's not over yet. Cervantes trying to kite away. Finally, a huge heal connects there by Drainer, but Cervantes still on the ropes. Yeah, Drainer locked down in crowd control for some time. How will he recover? Cervantes is the pillow. That Turbo Fist parries incoming attacks, including Death Strike. Cervantes is scared, hiding at the pillar. Drainer able to reconvene. Now trying to get aggressive onto Blizzo and punish his aggressive place earlier on. But Blizzo sees it coming, predicts it, activates Touch of Karma right before being stunned. And that's the highest level of play is then anticipating that you've overextended and having to make that predicted play, activating your defense before an incoming stun and denying a kill on yourself. So good awareness on Blizzo's part to realize he was overextended Ending, but then immediately counterattacked it. Now Cervantes is on the back foot. We see Diffuse Magic Force from Blizzo. He's actually still just running away, but with that Dark Iron Dwarf Ratio, the Fire Blood able to remove off multiple Glyre's Maledicts. So good defensive management on Blizzo's part, removing that offensive push. There's real no, there's not really any openings now for the Pumpers. That was their incarnation. They got a lot of defense, but now they have to wait until Incarnation comes back up again to really do too much else. And without Drainer's Way of the Crane to add some extra kick to their team, I don't think they have enough damage to kill any target, at least not outside of Incarnation. And the higher that Dampening gets up, the more vulnerable that Cervantes becomes. Yeah, that I mean, all of those statements are true. Cervantes and Fnobber is going to have to try to find some pressure here. But Cervantes, for one of the first times in this matchup, his force very defensive. He's just going to be using this box to line of sight Blizzle a little bit, spamming up the chains of ice. 
Now turning his attention over on Amaro, looking for some damage, but Blizzard, he has the touch of death. That's gonna make Cervantes very scared. If he can get the touch of death, and then after that burst hits, use the grapple weapon to deny any sort of death strike healing. Cervantes is gonna be feeling very, very unhealthy. Drainer's gonna have to use the life cocoon. And one thing I gotta say, Drainer's been doing a great job managing some of the interrupts coming in from Wildcard Gaming. One of the things he consistently does is when he's in a situation where one of his teammates are low, he'll throw out the life cocoon, and that's when he opens up his tree because if he gets interrupted, he has a life cocoon that's keeping his teammates alive, and then once the interrupt fades, he can pop off his team. If he doesn't get interrupted, then their teammate's gonna go to full HP anyways. Big setup coming in here from Wildcard Gaming. That could just be the end of the match. Cervantes overextended to deny a drink, but now his team is completely vulnerable as multiple Gladys Maledicts fly in and close the game out. Wildcard Gaming have crafted the perfect composition to defeat the options that the pumpers... ...rising sun kicks later on in dampening. And uh, I gotta say, now, in the previous match, the Windwalker was the kill target for Wildcard ga Gaming. They wanted to kill Nerd Rage on that Windwalker, and now they are going to be going after Nerd Rage once again. Um, uh, actually, in the first game, they went after Nerd Rage. In the second game, they went after Cervantes. But now, the target is going to swift switch back over to Nerd Rage here on that Warrior. And uh, we are going to see Maru use that map, the bottom side of the map, and try to use big, big circles here to survive. This was yep. the composition we saw of the Pumpers win the European Cup number three with. Definitely a powerful force, but the thing is, after talking to Belay, he said that this team is too predictable. Teams are going to figure them out, and then once they're figured out, they're no longer a threat. So it's up to the Pumpers now to evolve and adapt if they want to find victory. Yeah, I think that is one of the most important things to note. I, I mean, when you look at every single player and what they have brought here on the side of the Pumpers, this is the most Pumpers Cup that you could expect. This is exactly what you want to see all of these players doing, but the downside is going to be that that is predictable. This comp is definitely all pump, but the thing is, is Wildcard Gaming going to be able to deal with that in this game and take this Series 3-0? Yeah, we'll definitely have to see. Looney doesn't have a trinket right now, so potentially we've seen the pumpers before swap to the Restoration Druid and get significant damage out. Have to see if they can get that done. Leg sweep now on a Cervantes and Nerd Rage. Big damage coming in from Maro and Blizzo. Nicely done. Drainer responds with his revival. That three minute cooldown is going to be a huge AO area of effect heal. Heals up everyone on the map. And it looks like that will stabilize Cervantes and Nerd Rage uh, for the time being. I still like the build that Maro's running. It's the same one we saw in game number one where he has the extra Frost Nova relying on the Cone of Cold damage with that Burst of Cold PvP talent. And I think with the way Blizzard has been supporting Maro with Tiger's Lust, with Ring of Peace, uh, I think it's going to be really difficult for the Pumpers to actually take Maro down. All right, pressure on Nerd Rage. Two members low on health. Wildcard Gaming looking solid on this new composition that they've brought to the European Cup number five. Despite not many changes to the game, the meta has shifted significantly. This composition appears to have completely nullified the pumpers and taken away any opportunity they have with the compositions they've got prepared. Let's see if they can, though, with their main bread and butter. They've got a decent chance here, having forced the first ice block from Morrow off the back of Cervantes. Dark Simulacrum steals on those Polymorph spells. Morrow's going to have to be more careful with that moving forward. Potentially his life here if they're able to connect. Blizzo, once again with good defense, denies the kill. That is not the spot you want to be for Morrow. Like we talked about, when you're on that bridge, you don't have many options as far as hiding. So Morrow realizing he's in a bit of trouble, he jumps off once again. Now on this lower side of the map, he has a lot more room where he can move around, try to uh, avoid some of the incoming damage from Cervantes and Nerd Rage, because if you have a warrior on you, <laughs> you have an uh, unholy death knight on you for too long. As a Frost Mage, you're inevitably going to fall. Blizzo now getting swapped too, but Touch of Death is rolling onto Nerd Rage. Do they have the damage? One Maledict does connect. Drainer denies with the Life Cocoon, and Drainer, he's actually not playing Way of the Crane in this matchup, so he's opting to just sit back, keep his team healthy, keep them alive, and eventually maybe secure a mana lead. It seems like it's more difficult for Looney to actually sneak away, get out of combat, and regenerate mana through drinking. Um, so that's definitely a win condition here for the Pumpers as long as they deny the heals from Looney. I do think it was a smart decision by the Pumpers to go to Blades Edge Arena. Not a lot of teams utilize this map, but it's definitely allowing them to overcome the Frost Mage disadvantage. Although in this position, maybe Nerd Rage just gets destroyed. Multiple defensives pulled here. Will he be able to stay alive is now the question. Trainer getting interrupted twice in a row, really putting himself behind. No cooldowns for 10 seconds. Looney keeps the chain going, nine more seconds. 
Uh, do they have enough damage to push them over? It doesn't look like they've got enough in this position. Mana evening out slightly, but at least the pumper's still ahead. They've got that one advantage. Outside of that, it's really not looking too good. Even though they've got the Blades Edge Arena map pick, Morrow is now playing the map effectively at the bottom of the stairs, going back and forth, so there's a lot more open space. If he was playing on the top of the bridge, there, he wouldn't be able to escape as easily in Kite, so Morrow's definitely adapting to his location a lot better, I would say, overall than a lot of mages we've seen in the past. And as long as he's able to maintain this kiting and this positioning along the bottom stairs, I think they're looking good to set up victory here and just 3-0 the pumpers. Yeah, and during the meantime, Looney was able to escape, regenerate all of his mana. So wild card gaming, they're going to be feeling very healthy. Uh, shortly, we will be moving forward into dampening. Bash now onto Drainer. Nerd Rage Heroic leaps onto the top side of the bridge as he realizes he's vulnerable. He needs to try to avoid some damage. Blizzo with touch of death in five seconds. There's a huge offensive push available for wildcard gaming. Pumpers are going to have to find an answer to respond. Drainer life cocoon in 20 seconds. That's the answer that they need. Cervantes still a little bit low. I don't know where Blizzo is right now. I think he's just trying to split damage over on the Nerd Rage. Now, finally, Nerd Rage reconnecting onto Morrow. Good pressure here from the Pumpers. Morrow's looking to deny with the Temporal Shield. And with the way things are playing out, Wildcard Gaming, most of the pressure has been on their side. There was a mana lead for the Pumpers, but unfortunately they lost that by allowing Looney to sneak away and drink. Looney in crowd control. This is an opportunity for the Pumpers to get the second ice block. No coordinated assault. Nerd Rage keeps the chain going. Ring of Peace punts Morrow back into the fight. This is where I would have liked to have seen Drainer running that way of the crane. He hasn't run it the entire series. He, he wants to win on mana, but they're not winning on mana any of these games. So I think the way of the crane may be necessary for them to have enough damage potential to force these ice blocks and likely get a kill against the team of wildcard gaming. I think in this one case, playing safe is not going to be enough. Cervantes falling further behind and dampening stacks up. It becomes more and more difficult for him, especially with that grapple weapon strategy currently activated on Cervantes. Cervantes denying some death strikes. Maledix fly in to soak up Drainer's healing. Pressure is good. One death strike saves Cervantes for now. Another one stabilizes, but now his healer's locked in a polymorph, and he's basically out of runic power. He's trying to kite Blizzo. Blizzo reconnects with the Tiger's Lust. Morrow, though, not in a position to dish out any damage. Turbo Fist gets stunned. Cervantes with good evasive maneuvers. Yep. Excellently done by Cervantes. Now moving his way up on top of the bridge once again, but still not feeling too healthy. Drainer hasn't had an opportunity to top him off. All three members of the Pumpers in full retreat at this point. Drainer actually, he's using the Tiger's Lust, which I like that. So that's a good, or a good talent choice for him. Instead of the typical Chi Torpedo we see from the Mistweaver Monks, he's going to be opting into the Tiger's Lust, which is going to be a, uh, an extra break for Cervantes and Nerd Rage to get out of Roots, as well as gives them a sprint. So increasing their uptime on Morrow just a little bit. The Pumpers definitely know what they're doing. We like to call them the cleave of these, or the king of these cleave setups, but they may have met their match here against Wildcard Gaming, who seem to have the perfect composition into them. I think not only having the perfect composition, but also having the practice on it. I would have said the disadvantage for Wildcard Gaming is Looney running on mana, but he's more than prepared to go head-to-head -to -head with Mistweavers now, it looks. We saw him in Poike running the Rogue Mage, which is similar, but his mana was abysmal in comparison, so it, Looney's definitely ahead of the curve, I think, in adapting to this new meta, and even on Blades Edge Arena, where I would have considered them disadvantaged, they're starting to find victory. We see that the team of the Pumpers have repositioned. They're playing at the bottom center pillars, and this is to bait Morrow from that open space. He doesn't want to go back behind the pillar, so he's a little bit reluctant moving forward and then trying to catch Cervantes with the Frozen Orb, dish out some damage. Morrow moves into that pillar. He compromises his positioning. He stacks up on Blizzo. They then get double stunned. Drainer can use the pillar and those ramps to line of sight polymorph. So playing under that bridge is a trap that the pumpers are laying for Morrow. It's a matter of Morrow can navigate in, get damage out without falling to prey to that trap. Yeah, it seems like so far he's not falling for it. He's sitting back, just dropping the Blizzard, dropping the Frozen Orb. But now Cervantes and Nerd Rage, they move forward, trying to get some damage. You bring a piece. Denies a lot of that pressure as Morrow's looking to stay alive. Gets interrupted. Looney needs to find some heals. Temporal Shield will keep Morrow stable. Frozen Orb gets dropped out once again. And I gotta say, I really like this build from Morrow. We've seen a lot of Frost Mages struggling to get out pressure in these type of situations where they're being trained down by double melee. Criticizing a lot of them for still running the Frostbolt build, which just seems completely worthless. Morrow making some beautiful adaptations has been allowing him to not only kite better, but also get out additional pressure, which I think is a big ri a reason why Wildcard Gaming has been looking so good. I'd say there's a mistake made there, a pretty big one by Wildcard Gaming. Both Blizzo and Morrow were leg sweeped. Blizzo pre-grapple weapons the Warrior Nerd Rage, so he couldn't attack. 
but they both use Glyre's Medallion to get out of the Leg Sweep. So now if they get double stunned again, they can't get out of it. That could be at least a touch of karma. Maybe a kill on Blizzo. I think it's the main thing for the pumpers. They should keep attacking Morrow, think that he's the main target, and then switch to Blizzo in the next leg sweep. I think they, if they can do that, they're going to 100-0 Blizzo. But they need to make it to that point, and right now they're under fire. Tons of damage from Morrow onto two targets as Drainer has to make a choice of who he life cocoons. Tossing it on a Nerd Rage. Anti-Magic Shield enough for Cervantes. Good defensive mitigation by the team of the Pumpers. But still, Drainer running that safe build. No way the Crane is actually behind on mana, even playing it safe. And I think that may end up costing the series if they even had a chance against this composition. I would have liked to at least seen an attempt at it. We haven't seen it once uh, in any of these potentially three and final games that we'll see between these teams in the cup number five. Of course, you can never count Cervantes and Nerd Rage out. They have more than a ton of experience together in tournament settings. So even at a disadvantage, they're still a threat. Yeah, Looney once again snuck away, got a drink. Mar using Icy Veins to deny the kill, get out additional pressure. Beautiful Cyclone on the Drainer. Wildcard Gaming could close this out. Touch of Death rolling for Blizzo. Who's it on? Nerd Rage denies it with the die by the sword. There's it once again, with a nice drop weapon coming in from Blizzo as they continue the pressure on the Nerd Rage. Bash over on the Drainer. Is there any follow up? Avaro getting low. Definitely doesn't want to throw away the game. Wildcard Gaming has set this up beautifully. Morrow getting really low there. What a scary situation. Luckily still has a cold snap. Second ice block available. Wildcard Gaming now feeling healthy, but Drainer in the meantime managed to top off all three members of the Pumpers. Yeah, but at the cost of Die by the Sword and Icebound Fortitude, which are major defensive cooldowns for these classes to even stay alive. And now with dampening at that 40% mark, Cervantes can't just rely on Death Strike to be able to survive these incoming attacks. There's still one Ice Block. There's still half mana left in the tank for Looney. Wildcard Gaming have set themselves up well to 3-0 the Pumpers. Cervantes trying to push forward and dish out tons of damage. Blizzo there to peel potentially. Fists of Fury preemptive on the leg sweep, parrying that incoming stun. Good move by Blizzo, anticipating Drainer's movement, avoiding crowd control, and now building even more momentum for his team. Well, definitely good pressure here from the pumpers. Morrow could be in trouble. No trinket. Might be the second ice block forced out. He's got no mana. Ironbark looking to deny. Looney trying to keep him alive, doing everything he can, but Morrow dipping into execute range. That is not the spot you want to be in with Nerd Rage all over you. Morrow getting lower. Looney gets interrupted. What is Morrow going to do? Cervantes and Nerd Rage, though, in the meantime, they've expended a lot of their hit points. Chasing down Morrow in this matchup. Morrow has one ice block available. Temporal Shield looking to deny so far, but Cervantes and Nerd Rage still all over him. And Morrow is dancing with death. Finally, into that second ice block. Looney finds the heal. Cervantes actually oh. stole the ice block. And that will keep the him alive. The the Gladiator's Maledict. If sick, that, <laughs> sick plays. If that ends up winning the game because he ice blocked an incoming Gladiator's Maledict, it's going to be absolutely sick. I don't know if it's going to be. Everybody is dead. Drainer's working with nothing. He keeps them going a tad bit longer. How much longer can they go? It's match point in the upper bracket, but Nerd Rage will fall. Despite some sick plays by Cervantes, Wildcard Gaming have crafted the perfect answer for their entire feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth. 